Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. We are long overdue a Q&A and first up is, can you play metal on the recorder? Of course, I think you can play anything on the recorder, but the main challenge for metal or heavier music is going to be fitting into the sound. While some aspects of metal do work really well on the recorder, for example this extreme speed and the melodiousness of it all, we're not going to have a problem playing the notes. If you take any genre of music and put in an instrument that's not usually there, for example plonking a saxophone into a baroque ensemble, the sound is going to feel strange. Now, strange isn't a bad thing, but it will be noticeable. So we have a choice. We can lean into the recorderiness of it, or we can modify the recorder sound to fit the genre. There are loads of examples. Leaning more into the recordery, folky, Celtic, medieval style. We have bands like the Speed Folk set up Per Celt, and the German rock band Wildes Holz. You can hear how they're blending the woody sound of the record with acoustic guitar that actually creates a beautiful blend. Keeping the core of the recorder sound but within a heavier setup, we've got the amazing Rhapsody of Fire. In this band is pro recorder player Manuel Stadopoli and listen how they blend the Vivaldi C minor concerto into their band. allowed to do this with baroque music? Why the f*** not? <laughs> then we have bands who are using the recorder more as a texture. You've got the Finnish metal band Burnt Fields led by the amazing recorder player Juho Milela who has been on this channel. In their new song Empty Dreams you can hear a medieval tenor recorder just blending in, adding some extra textures. And then one of my favourite uses of the recorder um, is the song Chocolate Sludge Cake by Let's Eat Grandma. Starting off with these fragile textures and building it up to a harmony before the full band comes in, it makes me go... Then you've got bands like Syrinx Call who use the recorder alongside the lead guitar as a solo instrument. Listen to how they share the solo and this track traces in my mind. I love anything with a crash cymbal. Ch -ch -ch. That is my favourite <laughs> metal trope. The recorder actually works really well like this because it's got such a pure sound. It's almost like a sine wave and I think you can actually blend this really well with a guitar. But why not add effects like a guitar? Here we go, teasing the LED recorder yet again. We could choose to play it completely acoustically. But why not add effects just like on a guitar? As long as you actually play a decent solo, which I seem to be incapable of doing. So adding these effects can help blend your sound into the band sound. I'm gonna get another recorder out. I actually play recorder in my band Jaboa. We play rock, like rock with a bit of jazz and weird experimental stuff. I use this recorder which is my Eagle Alto because it's so loud it can stand up against the guitar and drums, amplified of course. <laughs> I use it as a solo instrument to add textures and sometimes just to do stuff. Really good explanation, Sarah. That's a 
moment in like the guitar solo where I just kind of do stuff on top. So recorder in heavier music and metal in rock. Yes, why not? You might have to search a bit to figure out how to fit your sound into the hole that you want to create. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's my favourite music related film? I know you want me to say some like classical music, early music movie like Le Roy Dance, which is all about the life of Lully. But in all seriousness, it's the Blackpink documentary. I love Blackpink. I love this documentary. I've watched it a hundred times. Not really, okay, I've watched it thrice. Next up, hi Sarah, I'm Indonesian and I'd like to hear more about your experience studying the Suling. The Suling is an Indonesian end blown flute that looks like this and it's played in the Gamelan Orchestra. I actually studied Javanese Gamelan for many years when I was a student, both in England and in the Netherlands, but I have to admit, I didn't play very much Suling. We mainly played Javanese Gamelan um, and a little bit of Balinese, I was much more interested in playing the percussion parts. Are there alternate routes to becoming a professional player or do you have to go to music school? Whew. There isn't one answer. I'm gonna speak about classical music now. It's not impossible to become a professional classical musician without having gone to music school and by this I mean conservatory level, but it will be much more difficult. But first off, what do we mean by a professional musician? Do you mean you're booked for paid gigs or you earn your living from it or you spend most of your time doing it or you reach a certain level in your playing um, or a combination? It's different for each person. The thing is about being a professional musician, it's not only being able to play your pieces very well in your study room, there's so many other skills that come into it, including the theory side, maybe research, ensemble playing, performance, teaching, composing, arranging, uh, running a business, being in contact with your network. I would think it's quite difficult to learn all of these things on your own. So one reason to go to a music college is to have have all that information and experience given to you, you might be able to find uh, the basics of music harmony online, but you might not be able to get experience playing with an orchestra. The other part of this is in the music business, not always, but yeah, who you know can sometimes be as important as what you know. I kind of hate this about it, but uh put a positive spin on this by immersing yourself in an environment full of people studying the same thing as you are you're going to be getting a lot of inspiration motivation setting up really cool collaborations but of course there are really prohibitive things about going to study at a music college for example if you're in the usa one thing will be the huge cost so if there's no right or wrong answer this is just a bit of the situation after C and F, do you recommend progressing with recorders in G and D? No, <laughs> really no. Because here's the thing, having recorders in a zillion different keys is not a prerequisite to being a good player. It's nice to have, but it's not necessary. I would say if you're progressing and you want to get the full benefit of the repertoire, you should be able to play in both C and F soprano fingerings, alto fingerings. But after that, it's just a bonus. <laughs> if you've got the money that you wanna drop on it and you like the sound, absolutely go for it. It's really wonderful to be able to support our handmade recorder builders after all. Uh, but I also know plenty of professional players that don't necessarily own those instruments. Glass half full or empty? Come on, you know I'm a glass half full kind of person. I'm also a morning person. Do you hate me now? <laughs> I promise I'm not this like smiley all the time. This is one specific side of my personality I present to the camera before I go and crawl back into my bed. Uh, getting a bit real here. Let's change the subject. What recorders are on my wish list? Ooh, I need a new tenor. I've had my tenor for 13 years now. I've played loads of contemporary music on it. It's quite muffled and scratchy and the top C does not work. I will replace it when I need it again. And that will probably happen when concerts start to happen again, which is... <sighs> oh. <laughs> 
which brings me to my last question. What was my favourite project from last year? Last year I made a kids music theatre production about Renaissance polyphony. It was called The Spailing Experience and it was so much fun. I was working with my longtime collaborator, composer Felipe Ignacio Noriega. We were acting and singing and dancing and playing lots of recorder. There was a microtonal organ, there was a bubble machine. It's basically all my favourite things in one place. Let's wrap it up here, shall we? The there's been loads of questions I couldn't get to but follow me on social media team underscore recorder and you can pop your question in for the next time. Links to all the lovely music I've mentioned below. As always you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here if you'd like to support team recorder please join our Patreon. There's lots of cool things happening there and up here's another video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!